Hello everyone, I am uh, very pleased to be back with my next video of beads. In this video I'm going to show you how to work the short rows to uh, make the shape of the shawl more of a shallow triangle which means we're going to take the right side and extend it in this direction so it's not as steep and then we're going to take the left side and extend it in this direction so it's not as steep as well. Before I jump into demonstrating how to work the short rows, I want to uh, point out a couple of things. One is that you'll see I have stitch markers, locking stitch markers along the edge and uh, rather the edges, both edges and I have two along the center. And that's because as we are working the short rows, we are going to maintain the motif along the edge and down the center. And of course on the other side, uh, on the other edge as well. The stitch markers are to facilitate following the instructions on the chart as well as in the written in the written form so both leverage the stitch markers also i want to point out that in particular the the edge stitch markers are uh, need to be repositioned every time after every repeat of the short row rows so basically right here i have a miniature a form of the shawl and I will be working the short row rows once but because you have two or three times the uh, that you need to repeat two or three times depending on the size that you are knitting uh, you have to reposition this marker at the beginning of every new repeat that information is available for you in the pattern so just pay attention to the instructions in the pattern and it should be self-explanatory. To begin knitting the short rows I need a, a second needle. This is the same gauge or size as the needle that I have been knitting with but it's a bit shorter so you don't need it to be as long. And I need the use of an additional stitch marker. It would be nice if the stitch marker is in, the, in a different color, but it's not absolutely necessary. As I am positioning to knit the short rows, I'm going to go through uh, the steps I am going to follow. So I'm going to wor be working back and forth rows, and they're going, they're going to get longer until I get to the center here. And uh, every time I reach a the top of this uh, main motif, every time I reach the top of it, I'm going to turn. I'm going to make a, a turn. However, because we are working in brioche, I can only turn when I work both the colors. And so I will begin the demo so you can see what I'm talking about. And the reason uh, why I actually need the shorter needle is because I'm going to have to slip my stitches back to work my other color. And by the way, in this uh, in this little miniature shawl, my color A is the pink color and my color B is the green color. All right, to begin knitting, I am going to take my needle 2 or extra needle and I'm going to start with my color A and I'm going to begin with knitting my I cord border stitches and follow my brioche pattern because this motif is going to extend along the border of the shawl. The first time I work the short row rows, I'm going to knit seven with my color A yarn. And 
and after the the marker I'm going to knit seven because that's my brioche section and this is where I'm actually doing this mod modified garter where I knit every row with every color and I'm to the top of this motif and I'm going to stop then I'm going to slide my stitches to the other side of my second needle and I'm going to work my color B turn give myself some extra yarn in here I follow the pattern this is the brioche edge And I'm going to knit all the way until I reach the tail of color A. So I'm going to knit all of the stitches that I previously knit uh, with, uh, with A. And again, I slip my edge marker and uh, continue knitting until I get to the tail yarn of A which is right here. When that happens, I turn my work. And right now, I'm going to take my stitch marker, locking stitch marker, and I'm going to put it around both the color A and B yarns and lock it. And I'm going to push it all the way close to the needle and secure it with my thumb like this. Then I'm going to take the other end of my second needle and starting with color A, get this needle out of the way, I'm going to follow my pattern by knitting the first stitch. And it's necessary that I tighten the yarn a little bit because I want I want the, the yarns, both A and B, to be tight and snug, uh, snuggled tight around the stitch marker. And by the way, this is a modified version. Okay, I'm doing something wrong here. I start knitting with my main needle. Not a good idea at all. Get it out of the way. I want to knit with my second needle because when I finish with A I need to slip the stitches to the other end so I can knit with my B. I'll go ahead and I was mentioning that this putting this um, stitch marker here is uh, what I believe is the Japanese way of working short rows and of course this is a modified version of it because I believe the standard Japanese way of working short rows is that you slip that first stitch after the marker. Plus uh, we are working short rows with brioche involved as well and that also makes it a bit more of a change to the traditional uh, Japanese short row method. So here we are, finished with A, going to slip the stitches all the way to here. And I've got my A yarn on the left and my B yarn on the right. So I can now actually use the main needle because now I will be able to have both yarns in here. I don't need to slide the stitches um, to, to, to knit. So here again with B, I pull the yarn tight. I knit the first stitch, pull a little bit more. And I continue knitting. Slip my stitch, work in brioche pattern. Oops, it fell off. until I reach the two stitch border, two stitch I-cord border and I'm going to slip these two stitches. Okay, so I've got my 
second needle free I need it immediately so I want to keep it close by and now what I'm going to do I'll just talk a little bit about it so I'm going to this is where I turn the last time then my next turn is going to be right here so I'm going to knit all the way to here but when I get here I'm going to actually take these loops put them on the needle and knit them together with the top of this motif and let me show you how to do this my second needle color A going to knit to there oh yes I am working my pattern and here I actually I do knit this I, I do brioche knit this normally but then here I need to make a decrease I I've knit this pattern so many times I and still sometimes I forget a little bit I'm gonna again this is all the the pattern and the written inst uh, are available in chart and written form going to slip this stitch slip my marker knit to my last turn which is where my stitch marker is right here I'm going to lift see here I've got uh, two loops in here I'm going to insert the needle right right there if you can see this like the same same space where the stitch marker is I'm going to remove my stitch marker or you can keep it if you want I mean if you want to be safe keep the marker for a little bit keep put it in the back and then knit this stitch here and these two loops together here we go I knit them all together and then I can continue knitting to the next motif and which is I have to knit seven stitches and then I stop right here and here I've got the stitch marker hanging I'm just going to take it off because I don't need it anymore here and you'll notice it's a pretty seamless connection in here it looks really nice and uh, you can see on the back side as well it looks pretty nice so at this point though I still have to do my color B and I will do that and so I can show you how to make the turn one more time color B and I need to make an increase here as again per my pattern and I'm gonna increase I'm gonna drop this off and continue my increase need to make seven stitches and continue working the pattern give myself some more yarn make another increase in here and in fact I think I will um, show you the the next row as well because this increase here is going to be worked in garter as well after this increase so let me finish making the increase uh, one more for seven I'm going to slip the marker and knit to where I left my color A yeah this is kind of easy knitting now it's all knit with each color after the border motif so I just have to knit that's all on each row with each color and then I turn my work and I'm going to uh, put the stitch marker around both yarn uh, both yarns exactly push the stitch marker really close to the needle hold on to it bring the other end of my second needle and 
begin knitting with A and this is gonna come loose a little bit but we can tighten it later no big deal okay and uh, you'll notice now when I get to my marker I am uh, going uh, to work that increase I'm going to purl these seven stitches and again this information is in the uh, in the instructions I'm going to untangle myself a little bit give myself some more yarn I'm going to slip the marker keep it in its same position knit seven stitches and then I will continue with the brioche motif to the end and this is a pearl this is a slip and this is uh rather that was a brioche pearl this is a brioche pearl slip knit i mean slip with a yarn over and knit knit um, and then my last one is a brioche pearl with my yarn in front i slip the last two stitches so that's uh, the A yarn. I slip to the right and then I work my B yarn like I showed you previously. And that's really it. So this is pretty straightforward. My next, when I get to this point in here, then I'm going to work put this back in the frame. So basically, when I work my color B yarn, then I'm ready to move past this one to this one, and I just follow the same exact process. I'm going to go ahead and finish working this side. I'm going to work one complete row here, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to work the left side of the short rows. I have completed working the short row section on the right side and obviously for your shawl you have to repeat the repeat area which means there are 24 repeat rows for the short row section and those have to be repeated two or three times depending on the size of the shawl that you are knitting. I also have knitted one complete row with each color so I can transition and work the short row sections on the left side of the, uh, of the shawl. You'll notice that the one complete row that I just worked transition is a right side row. To begin the short rows on the left side of the shawl, I have to turn my work to the wrong side and begin working the pattern or the short rows are starting on the wrong side and uh, just as an FYI when I finish working the short row section on the left I will finish with a right side row so that when I am ready to knit the next complete row it will be the wrong side uh, a wrong side row that will have to be knitted to the other side of the of the work all right so i am going to begin working the short rows on the left side and as per my brioche pattern i begin with the color a and again i leverage my second needle not my main needle as i've showed you in the previous section go ahead and knit to where i need to make my turn point and actually as a reminder my turning point is going to be uh, exactly the same it's going to be the the top of the of this motif but the top of this motif is not going to be as visible as when I was working my rows uh, my short rows uh, beginning on the right side the the easiest way to, to tell is to actually look at this column in color A but also 
I always have to make a knit seven to begin with, but then afterwards, when I combine or transition from one short row to the next, I always knit seven after that transition. So I will actually show you this. Uh, begin knitting, and drop these stitches, put them back on my needle, and we'll continue knitting to my turning point or my turn point. And that's going to be seven stitches after I finish my brioche section, or in this case, past this initial marker that I have. So I'm going to slip this marker. I'm going to knit seven stitches. Five and six and seven. So you'll notice here I am to this motif, the top of this motif, so I'm going to stop. Pull my stitches to the right on my ne second needle to the right side and knit with my color a B. And this time I will knit the same number of stitches I knit with A. So I'm going to get to where I stopped with A. And when I get to that point, I'm going to turn my work. six and seven okay I'm finished with my color bureau so now I'm going to turn my work to the right side to continue knitting my short rows but again as I demonstrated in the previous section before I transition here I'm going to put my locking stitch marker around both yarns secure it pull it all the way to the needle and hold onto it with my thumb to keep it close to the needle and then I'm going to take my color A bring my other end of my second needle which is stuck right now and begin knitting the reverse and in this particular case, because we are working the left short rows, the reverse is on the right side. I had made a wrong year over. And again, I am, I am working in my pattern. And I have to make a decrease right now. with my color A. And I will continue working to the end of the to the end of the row. And slip the last two stitches with the yarn in the front. Next, I'm going to work with my slip slide the stitches back to the right side of the second needle. And I'm going to work my color B, but at this time I'm going to actually leverage my main needle and knit. And when I knit again, I tighten this yarn. So I don't want too much slack around the stitch marker because I want these transition to look smooth and nice, nice and smooth. So here, I'm actually, right now, uh, I need to make an increase in the stitch. Oh, sorry, I actually should slip my marker first, and it looks like my marker is tangled. I will loosen it and secure it here. This marker is important that we keep it in the right position because it's a reference point for the 
written instruction instructions as well as the charts so we need to pay special attention to keep that marker in the right location oops i am making my increase not too graciously i suppose just gonna drop these stitches to make it easier for me to complete the increase and i've got the right number of stitches and i need to make another increase here one more i'll drop these stitches make my last yarn over and knit yarn over slip one with a yarn over bring my yarn to the front and slip the last two stitches for the eye cord then i'm ready to turn my work around and with my number two needle i begin knitting and then this time when i get to here i'm going to bridge by knitting these two loops with this stitch together but we need to be careful about the order because we want these two stitches to be more prominent on this side which is the wrong side in this case versus the right side so i'm going to show you this technique it's pretty straightforward though so knitting to that point and again i am working my brioche pattern and in this case i need to knit And this is a brioche pearl, slip one, yarn, uh, brioche pearl. And I only keep one motif on the edge. So when I get to this increase, I'm actually going to just knit it. Oh, sorry, I need to purl it because I want it to be a, a knit stitch on the right side. Just for that one row, I'm going to purl seven. I'm going to slip my marker, put it back on the needle here since I dropped it, and knit to the turn, which means where I made my turn. And when I get there, I knit that last stitch before the turn, and when I get there, I'm going to make sure that my locking stitch marker with the two loops is in front of me then I'm going to slip that stitch and when I slip it I just transfer it I don't need to slip it knitwise just tra plain transfer that stitch from the left to the right needle then I'm going to take this stitch marker with the two loops and I'm going to put them on oops, both of these loops on the left needle uh, just push that stitch marker now to the back so it's out of my way then I'm going to take this stitch that I had I have just slipped from this knee, uh, tip to this tip I'm gonna slip it back to the left needle tip and then I'm going to knit the two loops and the stitch together then I'm going to knit to my next turn which is I'm gonna knit seven stitches six and seven so here we are I am to the next turning turn point and I have my stitch marker with the loops and I'm going to release the stitch, stitch marker now take a look at my work you notice I made this transition and it looks very seamless on the right side it's, it's pretty good if I flip back to the wrong side, you'll notice that there is a little bit of a, of a loop in here, but it's in the bigger scheme of things. If we complete our work, it's actually going to be almost invisible 
given that we're working all of these rows in this modified garter pattern. So that's really it. That's the only difference between the right and left side short rows is how you manage the, the two loops on the stitch marker. But other than that, everything else remains the same. I believe now you have uh, all that you need to be able to work the short row sections of the shawl, of the beads shawl. And I'll be back one more time to show you how to cast on and work the, the border and a couple of options that we have in the border. Until then, thank you for watching and happy knitting.